they are almost like ghosts where that one minute you have them in sight and the next they can disappear. Well, I think people need to realize that the sharks in general have been around over 400 million years, evolving and surviving. And if you think of all the animals, including dinosaurs, that have come and gone during that period with sharks persisting, it's really quite remarkable and it's a testament to their ability to survive. They're really well adapted for the ocean environment and, they, and they've gone to almost every habitat globally. And they're survivors, you know, they're absolutely survivors, they're unique. The ultimate goal really is to learn as much as we can about the species to be able to protect it and support the conservation of white sharks. Also here because we are on the Cape and the white sharks are swimming in areas that uh, people are recreating. It's important for us to provide as much information as possible to the public and to beach managers. The white shark research we're doing is, is centered in the Chatham Orleans area of Cape Cod for one very simple reason. That's the one spot or spots we're able to find these sharks in predictable numbers. What we've been doing over the last seven years is using multiple technologies to get a sense of what these animals are doing in time and space. We're out on the water two days a week and we're out on the water for about six hours each time. So we've got two major objectives, and one is to tag sharks to look at their movements, and the other is to get a census of what's out there. So we're, we're conducting surveys. We always have our spotter pilot with us, which is really the key to finding white sharks. As much as people would love to see them when they're out boating, uh, they're really hard to find. So the spotter pilot has a completely different view from the air, and he is able to find these sharks. With every shark that he sees, he's gonna give us a call on the radio. That's a shark. It's south of us, we're we're gonna steam there right now. We're gonna go see a white shark. We're gonna steam over there as quickly as we can. Once we get up to that shark, John's driving the boat, I'll be out on the pulpit, and I'll be waiting to get close to that shark. He's right there, he's right there. Each shark that we come across, Dr. Greg Skomel first gets video footage of it. <sighs> so that that shark can be identified by unique markings. It's really important to get a glimpse of what this animal looks like because remarkably, each and every white shark is very, very different. I call it video fingerprinting them. You know, based on the color patterns, the scars, the shapes of the fins, we can tell who that shark is. We can also tell whether it's a boy or a girl, and that's important to know. It's like a female. After that, if the shark is staying near the surface, uh, he will look to tag the shark. We use a number of different kinds of tags, and the ones we're deploying most frequently now are what we call acoustic tags. And the way we detect those tags is not through a satellite system, but through a series of acoustic receivers. So when the shark swims within a couple of hundred meters of one of these acoustic receivers, the receiver detects that ping decodes it to determine who that shark is and does a timestamp. We go back, we collect the, data, the receivers, pull the data off of them, and we can recreate the local movements of those sharks. We believe the force that is concentrating the sharks in that area is really the presence of large numbers of seals. The gray seal population, as many seal populations on the eastern seaboard, has rebounded after you know, decades of protection. And with that rebound comes its top predator, and that top predator is the white shark. So you've got this, uh, you know, this almost perfect storm, if you will, of factors. You know, you've got seals, sharks, and humans. And so the work we're doing with the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy that they're funding is all about trying to figure out what these white sharks do, not only when they're in Massachusetts, but where do they go when they leave here. How does that correlate with various aspects of their natural history? You know, what are their reproductive patterns? What are their movement patterns? How does it fit into their general ecology? But we're also interested in the population status. What's the population size? What direction is it going in? What are the real numbers of animals that are out there? 